Hey everyone, welcome back to The Kiln. My name is Kane, and today we're going to continue exploring starting equipment and starting gear, as you might find in Index Card RPG's Master Edition. Specifically, Ghost Mountain starting equipment, the system's Weird West setting, and it's a ton of fun. Now, when ICRPG was updated to Master Edition, some of the formatting changes that you might see in Alfheim, the fantasy setting, or Warp Shell, the sci-fi setting, didn't quite make it to Ghost Mountain, so we still have some setups very similar to what was in 2nd edition for Core, which is why I have this list here of starting equipment shoes in E3 as well as the art from the gear. So let's go over each one of these, talk about how they work, and how I would include them in my game so that you can also include them in your game. So let's go, let's start over here with the starting equipment specifically, because they're starting equipment and they kind of have some of the weapons and gear. So in Ghost Mountain, you get to choose any of the three. You can choose from the starting equipment in Alfheim as well, and for these additional options to give your character more Ghost Mountain flavor. So you can kind of mix and match, which is just kind of standard for ICRPG. Mix and match to your heart's content. Now specifically, let's start out with the very first one, Fire Water. You get eight sips, pass out for 1d4 rounds. Why on earth would you take that as a piece of starting equipment? I don't know. Maybe you do want to pass out for 1d4 rounds. It's nasty stuff, Viper Venom mixed with monkey juice. Uh, again, this is something that if you were to take, it's probably going to be useful to use against others, use them against uh, the Dire Gang, do whatever. Um, again, it's a, it's a creative item that players will find a creative use for if they were to take it which is some of the times some of the best equipment is that kind of thing. It's not always about optimizing or finding the best combos. It's about taking something that forces you to be a little bit more creative. Next up is our ammo pouch. It has a 24 capacity, and without one of these, you'll be lucky to keep six shots dry. It has 24 capacity because in Ghost Mountain, part of the fun of it is actually counting bullets. Because you get into a gunfight, you get into a, a little scuffle with the Dire Gang or, or whatever, and actually counting bullets can become a point of tension for the game. And so this one allows you to have a 24 capacity, has 24 rounds for whatever. What I really like when it comes to reloading weapons in Ghost Mountain is that essentially it's not fire, then reload, fire, then reload. You just you have your capacity, you can continue firing every round as you wish, unless it's stated otherwise, and we'll get to that when we're looking over at some of these guns over here. But then once you're out, you just essentially spend a turn reloading, and I would just make it an action. Some people don't make it an action, it's just kind of a passive action, so if you have six rounds, you run it down, you will spend a turn, and then you're back to, back to full. It kind of happens on the side. But again, depends on how you want to run it. Uh, the Waste is Not Kind also does this, and it's, it, it is, there is fun to be had in counting bullets. Just, I'll just leave it at that. The next thing is cold weather gear. Up in Buskin, it's uh, terribly cold. Without this, you'll be dead in an hour. It's plus one armor. Essentially, this is plus one defense. That's just a residual from core. So it's defense. And is it? would you really be dead in an hour? Depends on how you're playing it. But cold weather gear lets you move up, uh, get you that armor, and you're good to go. What great way of kind of RPing or depending on how the world is going um, based on the GM. Bull Whip, we get a hard, uh, hard as hell to master, makes for a nasty useful tool in uncertain times, can be used as a weapon or grappler. So we're using weapon uh, weapon bonuses as well as a grappler. For grappling, I would use maybe strength or dex, um, like a contest, and then depending on who wins, you grapple them, and then from there on, it's, it's kind of like a contested strength roll or, or whatever to try to break free. So you can apply your own grappling rules. A lot of the times, it's just a contested role for me to keep things simple. Whenever someone's like, can I grapple them with my whip or can I grapple them with hand-to-hand? -hand? It's usually a contested role of either strength or dex. Then you got Saddle and Tack and Kuz Lariat. For any riding, can be sold for 30 coin, requires wagon or cart or transport. If you're using coin, great. If you're not, not a big deal, but it requires wagon or cart to transport. You know, you don't want to be carrying around a saddle anywhere, so you're probably going to find a horse or a wagon. But this just allows you to have some bonuses, maybe when you're riding a horse or whatever, but can kind of build into your character if you're uh, a master horse rider. Manacles, leg irons and such. If you're a lawman, they're great for, uh, for restraining infernals or wraiths or outlaws or, or whatever. You can even forge it with silver properties 
to in, to do those infernals uh, wraiths. So this is a great kind of RP moment. Maybe you can slap them onto a, law, a lawman, and that's just part of the fun of playing in the Weird West. It's it's a different feel and a different kind of style of adventure. You know, you watch Western; it's very different than a, than a classic action movie, and that's part of what these equi this equipment is building towards. Coffee outfit can serve one supply when camping. Grants all cohorts and hero coins uh, a breakfast. Uh, it grants a hero coin at breakfast. So in Ghost Mountain, there's also some built-in supplies. It's mentioned a lot in the worlds. Not everyone uses supplies, but Ghost Mountain has some some uh, instructions on how many days you go without supplies. And so depending on how you're going with your campaign, can uh, you can use supplies. Otherwise, if you have a coffee outfit, essentially you could set it up to have a certain number of uses if you want, or it's just there for as long as you want, and then grants all hero coins a, a breakfast. If you're not using supply, I would just, if someone takes coffee outfit, I would uh, grant everybody a hero coin at the beginning of the session if you have that. So if you feel that's too much, use the uses and then call it a day. If, you don't, if you're happy with that, just let someone take it and then they get a hero coin at the start of the session. Easy peasy. Uh, Kanuska or Kaneska blanket near indestructible wool blanket with geometric pattern also shows friendship with Kanuska tribes. Awesome. There's no bonuses here, but there is some RP elements. Like if you're working with the Kanuska Kanuska tribes, it could give you a bonus to your charisma rolls if you need it, or it just kind of gives you uh, a bonus there. You don't even have to roll for it. You could resist some of the weather. It could be you know fire resistant it's up to you to make up on this similar to the fire water up here this is a creative uh, piece of equipment that players get to be creative with so an awesome thing to take and then hipawa hipawa hide tent and tack a compact portable shelter for five can be used in a cold conserve two supplies per day again another if you're using supplies awesome requires wagon or cart to transport includes rope iron spikes and cooking gear so if you're having more of this ongoing survival or traveling through Ghost Mountain, uh, using supplies, this can play into it where players can have some extra bonuses as they, they work through things uh, and travel, or this could be potentially just something that makes them easier. So maybe instead of recovering the 1d4 plus, you know, 1d4 plus 1 when they're resting at night or at the end of the scene. Maybe they can stop for the night and they can rest back to full. Up to you on how you want to run your game. A lot of the, some of these are how do you how are you running your game and then use them to lean into how you're running as a GM. But that's kind of the starting equipment which is more utilitarian, more built into the story, built in the setting. But then we get into some of the really fun stuff which are the weapons. This is what kind of highlights uh, Ghost Mountain really well. It's because you actually get built-in guns and you get built-in swords. You get to face off against cowboys and go to town uh, in a shootout or whatever. So you get some built-in guns, in it, which is exciting. And these guns could always be dropped into any of your other games. All time has got, you have the gun effort, but they don't have any mentions of like what guns you're actually using. So this is a great way of dropping in some advanced guns into your offline game or or whatever that's a little bit less than what you might find in warp shell so let's talk about th talk about these ones starting with the classic the six shooter so this is a classic six shooter very simple sidearm reliable it uses one turn to reload okay so essentially like i said after you have six shots you spend a turn to reload and you're good to go real simple when it comes to other gun rules uh, within Ghost Mountain, some of the stuff that comes into play is like range. And let me see if I can grab that real quick. I'm pulling up Master Edition right here. Wow. And right here. So some of the guns rules that if you're gonna play into them is this is on page 239 of Master Edition. You've got big slugs, so any attempt of a 15 plus does maximum. So if you roll 15 plus on your D20 roll, you do maximum damage, which is probably gonna be that D8 plus your bonus, so eight plus your bonus. 
Uh, in the face, any hit at point blank range does maximum damage. Again, if you're up real close and you just hit them, no matter what, uh, you get to do point blank range. And this is for any weapon. This one's specifically for big slugs. So a six shooter probably does not have big slugs. Knock silly, anytime you're hit by a firearm for three or more damage, roll con to avoid losing one turn. Uh, you could use, you know, if you're really feeling hard about losing a full turn, you could make it say, choose between movement or an action. If, you, if, you're, if you're not silly, you can move or you can act, but not both, if you fail that con roll. Strict ammo, six bullets count as one supply. You've got the supply rules down here. I'm not going to go over those. Um, then you've got primitive barrels, pistols. So our six shooter can only hit near targets unless you roll a natural 20. So our six shooter can only hit near unless you hit that natural. So no far shots. Maybe you could do a far shot. You could ignore that and make it turn into like a hard roll if you want to hit far. Uh, duds, wet ammo has a 50% chance of being ruined, which we'll only find out when firing. So if you've been out in the rain, roll a percentile die. It's 50% chance if um, there. Pouches keep the ammo dry. So that's a reason to take that ammo pouch. And then right in the eye, any gunshot, aim for the vitals with a hard roll. So if you want to aim for the vitals, you roll hard. If a hit, do not roll damage. Target makes a con roll or is dropped to one HP. So this is a great way to drop a lot of people, um, a, lot, a lot of enemies. And so this, this kind of highlights again that Ghost Mountain is like when it comes to a gunfight they are meant to be big bad and scary and and terribly lethal so if you want to play with any of these rules you can get into a gunfight and it goes pretty quick it's not about a slog of how quickly can we drain a pool of hp it's like no it's like bang 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 it's over but yeah so that's our six shooter really classic reliable probably if you're using the reliable tag probably doesn't break Whew, long story for that one, but let's move on to another one. One of my favorites, uh, just classic. It's just iconic, the carbine rifle. So this is a lever action, eight capacity. Does it mean anything for lever action? Not really, but it's fun. And it's eight capacity, so you got eight shots, and then I would still have a round to reload. This one I would also say, because it's a carbine, you could hit far with this without having to have extra rolls. Then you've got the shotgun down here. Nasty, clumsy weapon, close quarters, two capacity, so you only got two shots down here, and it's one turn to reload. Similar to the pistol, similar to the carbine, just spend a turn, reload, you're good to go. Now this is still using gun effort, it's, it's not getting any extra bonuses from there, but maybe if they're close, you're gonna have a lot more impact. Maybe you could push it up to ultimate if you're feeling it, if you roll high enough, who knows. It's just, you're still rolling gun effort um, and you got that two capacity. And then you've got the snub shotgun. So it's scatter shots. It's a two capacity similar to this shotgun, but it hits any and all close targets in front of you in firing. So it blasts out. So, you, but you have got to be close. You've got to be up close and personal with those uh, before it takes into effect, which could be fun. Let them come into the, into the saloon and just like bang, take them out. All right, moving away from some of the guns, we'll get back to these other ones, but then we've got our compound bow over here. This adds strength to damage. So essentially you're gonna be rolling, I would be rolling weapon here, but then you get plus your strength. So not to your attempt, you're, used, you're still you're probably using dex to shoot. So that's your attempt, but then your damage is a weapon bonus. So a D6 plus your bonus, plus your strength bonus. So this is D6, if you had a plus one to your weapon, and if you had a plus two to your strength, this would be D6 plus one plus two, so D6 plus three. That's how it would work. Coming back, you've got your Bowie knife, the most reliable thing on the mountain. There's no real bonuses, there's no extra damage. This would probably be doing weapon in my opinion, but you've got a knife, it's reliable, it's probably not gonna break on you. You could probably throw it, you could probably jam a door open with it like this is a very utilitarian come up with a creative way of using this bowie knife and you're probably going to be good to go next is the saber over here it's a cavalry sword it's expensive and it's silver so this is a another weapon it's expensive so you could probably get some good coin for it probably a tradable thing probably reckon that people recognize for its value, but it's also silver, which means it probably does some extra damage to wraiths and infernals. 
however you want to play into that. So it has this kind of extra silver property, which makes it more effective against some uh, some of the uh, darker, weirder creatures in the West. Then coming back, we've got our big boy here, our Gatling gun, the godless death machine of the East, four shots per roll. So you're using gun effort, and every time you're rolling, it's probably gonna be a D20 plus dex, but then you get to roll four shots. Or is this against the same target? Is it against different targets? But essentially you're rolling four shots per roll. And so what I would end up doing is you get to do four D8 for the gun effort. And then I would split that out amongst up to four different targets. So just as you're moving across. Uh, you could put it all into one, you could put it all into two, three, four, however you want to divvy it out. But I would roll four D6. And what I would end up doing is probably like make, you know, who are you going to hit with your first roll? This guy, and then roll. And then who's going to be the next guy? And then roll. And then the next one, roll. Um, because it's it's for each sh shot. I don't want to necessarily like roll and be like, okay, you've got, you know, whatever that is, 32, split it up however you want. You could do that if you're quick, but you could also roll really quickly and have it feel like here's a shot, here's a shot, here's a shot, here's a shot. Or just roll four D8s and then just kind of assign out the dice. This would also probably impact movement if I was carrying this around, but it doesn't say, so play it out as the GM wishes. Next up is the Demon Spine, the fencing blade used by Infernals. So this one is used by, in, by Infernals, but you can now take it. So you're now playing with demon weapons. And I would probably have this one have some kind of uh, condition it getting hit. Um, obviously, it's kind of cool just for a player. So you might have some extra bonuses against Infernals because it's, a, it's a, an Infernal weapon. Uh, but maybe it has some extra bonuses against mortals or just classic humans, the, the classic cowboys. You could come up with something like that. Uh, but it's also just really cool. Then you've got the uh, smoke blade. So it's caught between worlds, can only be touched by infernals. Does that mean you're the, you have to be an infernal to carry it? Maybe. Uh, or maybe it's only effective against infernals. That's a way to do it. Another fun way to kind of think through how does this play into my game. And it's kind of cool to carry a sword. It's no ammo, nothing to worry about. You're good to go. Last few, we've got the Relic Pistol, which is over here. It's a haunted gun for capacity. So you have four haunted in what way? I don't know. Maybe you could bump this up from gun to magic, and now it's doing that. Or maybe it does double against demons. Or maybe it speaks to your mind. Who knows? Find a way to figure out why this relic pistol is haunted and work with your players to have this haunted element as part of their equipment. The last gun we've got here is the elephant rifle, the biggest gun. It's got one capacity and it always does ultimate. This is where I would have those big slugs. It's If you hit a 15 plus, it does, um, does ultimate, which is just max. This will be 12 plus your bonus. That's a big hitting rifle, rifle, but again, one ammo. So one, spend a turn to reload, come back. So every other round you could be firing this, this uh, elephant rifle as long as you have ammo. Then we've got the Screamer. It's like a grenade, but it's a skull, which is kind of fun. It's just a skull, but it's not shh happening. This is where I would just have maybe a D4 timer or for the fuse. And then I would do something like either ultimate or 2d12 for this kind of grenade um, all within, you know, near. And you'd end up just throwing it with a dex to see if it lands somewhere where you'd like, and then you go from there. Second to last, the penultimate ghost equipment, ghost mountain equipment is the iron cross, oak and cold iron, huge spike, simple, deadly, always does double to infernals. So this is something where I would probably do weapon and then it does double so it would end up being 2d6 plus your bonus and that's against infernals but it's also simple and deadly so it's probably really easy to use it probably really hurts you know whenever you're using it against somebody a great option for the priest 
and finally we have the nitro bottle again this is one that doesn't have a lot all it says is careful with that kid so this is similar to the, the grenade where it's kind of explosive so you could have it where if you roll uh, you know if you throw it it could do d12 damage you could lay it on the ground and use it it's flammable flammable you could set it up to treat it like a bomb you could do all sorts of creative things with it um, but it's also nitro so you could have it be like unstable and then if you ever roll a one so just anytime if you're carrying this and you roll a one it explodes even if you're not using it and that's kind of like a tension getter as you're carrying that nitro bottle but unlike the other system other settings like Alfheim or warp shell this this set of equipment has a lot more flexibility. It's not as detailed on exactly how the mechanics work, which leaves it up to you as a GM and the players to decide how do you want to run these weapons and these items. And it lets you it lets you build into the the feel of Ghost Mountain as you as you want. But what do you think? Like for some of these, like the Nitro Bottle, how would you run that? How would you run the Iron Cross or the relic pistol let me know in the comments and if you've ever run ghost mountain um let me know how they've gone or if you've never run ghost mountain try to get into a game it's a great setting to play it's just it's a change of pace from fantasy or sci-fi and it's just a ton of real good atmosphere especially in ghost mountain um, in master edition so take a look at this but for now let's head back to the kiln keep working on our projects and if you guys haven't had a chance to hop over to the discord come hop in and get an update on the roll and forge community projects which is going on absolutely the kiln folk are absolutely crushing it and i'll see you guys over there